All right, it is time for a book review. Shannon reads those books, and we're talking all about Diary of a Nobody. Hey everyone, it is Shannon, and I'm super excited to be here today and to share my thoughts on Diary of a Nobody. This is part of my Those Books project, and um, or my Those Books exploration, which is a reading challenge or exploration that I set for myself back in 2014, uh, when I recognized that I wanted to read more books that would increase my reading comprehension, make me understand the world better, of course enjoy titles as well, um, and I just wanted to sort of like deepen my reading experience overall. This ends up being on that list, and so we're going to talk all about it. So Diary of a Nobody is by George and Whedon Grossmith. It was serialized in 1888 to 1889 and then came out in book format with illustrations in 1892. The copy I have does have illustrations. There is some illustrations. Um, and it is the 55th book that I have read for the Those Books Exploration. And now, in some ways, I'm like, wow, 55, yay. But then I'm also like, I started back in 2014, so is it a lot? I don't know. Anyway, I'm, I'm the, the overall number of titles is 428. And I don't know, I had already read some, I don't know where I stand, but um, this is the 55th new read for the project or the exploration. It is part, it made the list for being on the BBC's Big Read. It was number 186 out of 200, so just made the cut. Um, it is actually public domain, so if you're interested in reading this, I will leave links down below for both Project Gutenberg to see it in, uh, read it in text format, as well as it is on LibriVox in audio format. Um, I read this in in September 2020. It took me just a week and a half to read, which is very unusual for those books book. Um, and I gave it 8 out of 10. I actually quite enjoyed this. Now, I will say that part of my enjoyment of this is given the time in which I read it. We are now in, I don't know, we I think we just sort of hit the second wave of COVID here in Toronto. So um, this book very much centers on sort of everyday life and just talking to neighbors and being, you know, engaged with family and talking to them. It's just everyday sort of social life. So that is very comforting right now. If I had read this two years ago or four years ago or in three years, I have no idea. But it was just sort of like the perfect book at the perfect time. Now, in terms of why I chose this, it was completely random. I actually had it wrapped up and I just wanted to get back to reading books for the Those Books Exploration. And I noticed that it was quite... Thin. So I picked it and it ended up being just perfect because it's in diary format and like really short chapters and like it was just really so I just wanted to get back into reading books for this exploration and also back into reviewing books um, and I do always re I, I tend to review books if I, I'm reading them for a project or challenge like my those books exploration or my sci-fi fantasy and weird exploration so I wanted to get back into reviewing books and so I it ended up being, you know, a pick for that. Um, and then one of the questions I have my, for myself is, did I understand it? And I would say yes. Like, it's very, it's not hard. It's not challenging reading. And also, I had a, a helpful co-host because this book is heavily annotated um, with both highlighting and handwriting throughout the entire thing. So I got commentary throughout the entire book on what someone else thought of all of the different moments and character type stuff. Now, of course, when I flip pages, I'm not seeing tons of it, but there was lots of commentary. No, oh, they just, they went to just highlighting towards the end. So I imagine someone had this for school, you know, and so there's lots of comments in the margins, um, and, uh, Moments with the drawings everywhere. So that was really it was strange to do that. I don't I don't annotate my books. Um and so it was a bit of a different experience, but it also, like for me, it made me realize I was very taking it at face value. We follow um oh gosh, what's the character's name? Charles Pooter. Um, and he, you know, and he lives with his wife and they see their son and they, he has friends that are neighbors who come by you know, 
before dinner or after dinner and they talk about stuff and they play games and he goes to work and he goes to events and you know complains he complains about a lot of things he always mentions how much things cost and they're not terribly happy with some of the behavior of his their son you know and you know just encounters with you know people that work for them or you know it's just it's just everyday life so it wasn't hard to understand at all the only thing for me was that I didn't pay particular attention to the names of his friends so there is a certain sense at some point I just I didn't know who was who and I think he had sort of like a core sort of two to three friends and at some point he got a little like jealous I think because some of his friends were were spending more time with or kind of siding with his son over him so I wish I paid a little more attention I think I'm going to start doing just little character sheets or character cards for cards for books I read because usually I find the author gives you lots of hints and it's not and often characters play a role right like someone is you know their boss someone is uh you know a family member someone is the best friend someone is the um like the enemy or you know like whatever like and so usually I don't feel like I have to work too hard in remembering the names of who's who because it usually it's 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 given to you to be honest I find it's usually pretty clear but in this I found it hard to remember who his friends were um and beyond like because some people came in and out of the story and some people seemed to stick with them through the whole entire time so I wish I had just remembered a little bit better who the, were the people that stuck with him or were part of the story for the whole time so that's and I wouldn't necessarily that is I didn't understand it that's a bit just sort of lazy reading <laughs> to be honest <laughs> it made me because it was so accessible I didn't I didn't put as much effort into you know, <laughs> my part of the reading. Uh, the next question I have is, did I enjoy it? And I would say, yeah, like this really, like, as I said, this was sort of the perfect book at the perfect time. If I had read it pre-COVID, I would probably think what, what, like, what's the thing about this? What is, what are people connecting to? The commentary of my, my ghost reader friend uh, was very much talking about con being concerned with appearances and that he is ignorant of social trends. It's a lot about social interactions and, and how you are in society and, and wanting to be seen and wanting to be part of things and that kind of stuff, which are not things that themes that particularly resonate with me. I'm just, it's not something I connect to. It's not something I strive for. Um, and, um, but that, you know, you can't deny that there, there, there is impact of being in you know, how you are seen and stuff like that. But it's a lot of sort of statusy stuff. But there's also a lot that sort of from the person who, who read this indicates that he's very unaware of his own, like, you know, um, uh, like he does his social uh, flubs and he doesn't even know it, right? It, actually, I think I, I don't know if I would have picked up on that, like as a particular thing, but it definitely happens. It definitely happens. Like he tries so hard sometimes to like, and it's just like, no, just stop, <laughs> just stop. Like it's just, anyway, but I definitely did understand it. I definitely did enjoy it much better than I imagined. The next question I had was, what is, is it what I expected? And like, not at all. And I didn't have a huge sense of what it was going in. I didn't think it would be sort of like commentary slash humor. And I don't know if I would go as far to say humor. They say in this, they call him the, oh, wow, uh, oh cultural icon and uh, uh, there was a word that I'm not seeing here well they say hilariously and painfully familiar in its small mindedness of the suburban world and essential decency so I think all of that totally um, is true uh, a genre of suburban fiction. Oh, interesting. Um, I will say I didn't read the introduction. I meant to. I got to some of it. I always read that stuff after because I want to have my own response, uh, but I didn't end up getting to it. I have a lot on my TBR, so I didn't end up getting it, but I did enjoy it. It definitely wasn't what I expected. It was way more accessible, easy to read, um, and um, lighthearted and just kind of bizarre. Like, mundanely 
um, delightful. And uh, yeah, so I don't know. One of my other questions I have myself for myself is what did I learn? And I, I wouldn't I actually I would say I learned from the notes. I it was really interesting to see what someone else thought and picked up on. And you can definitely feel I can feel their frustration with the character. Whereas I just thought it was kind of like he was just you he, he just he was he was never malicious, but that didn't mean he always did the right thing. He didn't always do the right thing. Um, but that's not super. I didn't feel like that was super what it was about. Um, so I did feel like I learned from the person who left notes, which is really interesting because generally speaking, I wouldn't pick up a secondhand book that had so many notes in it. Um, but maybe because I had no reference for the book and not a huge investment in like really wanting to read it, it just happens to be on a list that I'm working through. I found it at a library book sale and why not? It's really short. Why not read it? So I didn't have a lot of expectations. It would be different if it was like an 800 page fantasy novel and there was commentary and all that. Like that would drive me bananas. That would just not, that would not work for me. But for some reason, when there's less context, there's less expectations. So you can be more open to, to hearing things. And I definitely feel like I was for that one. Another question I have is, do, will I read more from the author? I don't know if there is that much more. Like, this was serialized, and there is a whole chronology of the authors in here. Let's take a quick look to see if there's tons. The introduction is long. Notes on the text. Selected bibliography. No, that's about other stuff. And that things that they refer to. The chronology is about their lives. Oh, but they did write other stuff. I think separately. So I don't, maybe I don't. I I hadn't really thought about it, but um, I wonder, like I wonder if it would have the same tone as this. Like this just feels like I don't know. It was just sort of like the right thing. Um, and so I wouldn't not read more from the author. But to be honest, there's a lot more on the, those books in some of my other lists that I would probably want to get to first. If you are familiar with the authors and have suggestions of where to go next, feel free to leave those recommendations down below. Um, and um, the last question is, am I glad I read it? And I'm like, yeah, this was just the right book at the right time. Um, and it also makes me excited about getting back to um, working on the those books exploration because it is like, you know, when you've been working on something for like, this is now six years in, and I've read 50 out of like 400, like there's still, I think there's more like, I think there's between, I have, I have about two and 300 left. And I'm not telling myself that I have to read everything. Um, it's one of the few, it's an exploration, not a project. So I don't have to read everything, but um, I am like, there's so many interesting different choices. So I'm glad that this sort of kickstarted me getting back into working on books from that list. Um, and some of them are really long, some of them are really short. It's all across the board. I do have it on a Goodread shelf if you're curious, and it is a combination of five different uh, book lists. And so as I mentioned, this one was from the BBC Big Read, which I have had a variety of different reactions to the books that have been on the BBC Big Read. I wanted to include that list because it is a voted on by the public as opposed to a curated by, you know, um, uh, a, a, a person or a website or, you know, what have you, which I think most of the other lists are. Um, and so I think that that was one of the reasons why I wanted to include it. So let me know, have you read Diary of a Nobody? Did you enjoy it? What did you get from it? And um, yeah, what are you reading these days? I have no idea what I'm going to read next. Oh, I do have an idea, but I have no idea when I'm going to finish it. So I'm not going to mention it because I very well the next review for this could be, for the, those books, exploration could be, I don't know what it's going to be. So we'll see how it goes. But this one fared well. Sometimes it's good to take a risk. And uh, I am glad that I took that one. So thank you so much for watching. And I'll be back soon with another video.